active personality enthusiasts. So I have a guest with me today. His name is Brian, and he is an ESTJ, and he is an MFTESI last play um, consume sleep last, and I am an ISTJ MF SITE last play sleep consume last. So we both have Savior SI, and we're going to be doing a series of videos on the SI experience. We Yay! There's our logo. <laughs> gotta have gotta have some century, right? That's right. Right. Yeah, so thanks for having me on your channel. Uh, Laura and I, we chat from time to time because we do have so much in common and uh, share experiences of how does SI uh, look and feel for you and, and vice versa. So uh, that's kind of the backdrop of this. And here we are. So voila. So why don't I ask you the first question if it's okay? Sure. Okay, so SI to you, if you were like to just to tell somebody out in the street you know, that you met randomly about, you know, what SI was to you and maybe how that relates to what you'd like to communicate to the folks watching today. What would that be? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, there's different ways to define SI because I think in Myers-Briggs land, they look at it a little bit different than OPS land. So um, you want me to talk more about like the OPS version of SI? I think maybe, why don't we just talk it broadly any way you want to, and then we'll end okay. up probably talking it more OPS because that's probably going to be most of our audience. All right. Okay. So, um, well, I think, I think broadly it's your own personal, you know, sensory experiences. Um, it's not looking at anybody else's experience and it's kind of gradually gathering those experiences over time and and refining them and um kind of coming to a better understanding over time and, and wanting to hone in on it so um so it's like i had a bad experience <laughs> I, I don't want to have that experience again, or mm. I had a really good experience. I want to repeat that experience, or I, I want to even make it better the next time. And you keep, and you keep kind of refining it. And so, I mean, it's not that an SI is closed off to new stuff. That that's a common myth. But I think when we do take in new sensory, it, it it's it's kind of more narrowed down compared to what SC does because it's kind of kind of refining that and, and improving upon what, what what it is we already know. Yeah, wonderful. That's a real good uh, explanation of it. Oh, uh, thank you. Probably. Yeah, yeah. How do you see it? Now, you have SI in the second position, so maybe you have a little different outlook on it? Yeah, for me, it's, it's you know, OPS now, I finally feel like I have a better idea of what it means in this personality code versus in the others that I had familiarity with before. But yeah, like you're saying, but the word impressions come to me uh, when I think of SI. It's like impressions a long time that, as you said, uh, kind of narrow you into, you know, avoiding what went wrong and, and repeating what went right and then extending that into the future. So to me, that's kind of what SI uh, means to me. And I've grown to learn that I thought I was bad at it, but actually uh, now that I know what it is and what it's not, you know, I had a very narrow impression of it. Um, I'm told by many people that I'm really good at it, which was a big surprise. So yeah, it's uh, I came into the OPS with a Myers-Briggs background, ENTJ, thinking I was NISE all these years. And then now at this granular level, there's a, uh, there's so much, so many more moving pieces, and I think it gets under the hood and it makes it more valid for you to open it up and put it back together. And so now I can, I can definitely see how I have this OISI instead. Yep. You know, just like you, you know, you, you now that I know what it is, and I'm looking back on it, 
I can see how, in fact, that is what happens. You know, you look back, you avoid what went wrong, and you remember um, what went wrong, and you remember what yeah. went right, and it gives you a real yeah, good definitely. reference point to navigate. Yeah, yeah. So, because yeah, you because you said, um, T I N I or T E N I, right? That, that's that kind of what you thought you were. So I thought it was. Yeah, and I remember for a while, like a long time, I, I mistyped myself as well. You know, I thought I was, I thought it was like INTP or or INFP. You know, you know how those tests are online. Mm -hmm. They're kind of biased in favor, favor, favor of N. Like if you aren't just blindly following tradition, and if you have an open mind, you know, you're, 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 and if you have intellectual interests, you're you're likely to score N on the tests. But then when I compared myself to other intuitives it's like you know i could always tell that something doesn't feel right my si is too good compared to them so yeah and that's the key word there comparison you know as we say in the community uh, across the spectrum and that's one of the reasons uh there's a couple reasons why i didn't think i'm si well two or three one is because marsh briggs i am you know i'm a better match for the descriptors for entj than i am estj and that's still true, but they don't mm -hmm. cut it down at the level like OPS does with all the moving pieces. So they kind of summarize, you know, the perceiving functions at a much higher level. But when you get under the hood and under the hood, then I can see with the distinctions and the definitions that it's really S-I-N-E versus N-I-S-E. So that's right. been part of my journey. And it's uh, it was confusing at first. The other reason why is because in the old system and still broadly throughout personality code world, a lot of folks kind of for right or wrong assigned it as uh, related to academic memorization, which I was horrible at, you know, and I understand why now, and I've been able to deconstruct that and put that together. And so I had a very narrow perception of what SI was. And quite frankly, in the OPS system, my perception was wrong. Uh, call out to Jamie in the community. She's one that kind of insisted earlier on that, I would probably be SI because I reminded her a lot of some of the things that she faces and her experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, nah, nah. But I had to tell her here uh, along the way. Yeah, you were right. Okay. <laughs> you had me right. nailed all the way. Okay. So, so, so for those of you that, that aren't familiar with Jamie, Jamie is a wonderful contributing member of the OPS community. So her full OPS type is ISTJ. Now she is FM. S I T E blast sleep play consume last. So okay. But to now you see, for instance, that's an example like of kind of a rote memory thing that I'm not that great at. Mm -hmm. Like if I casually encounter something that you know is a code or a memorization like that, dates and history, uh, biology test, that kind of stuff. If I don't have repetitions with it, or it's not in my FI box and I haven't lived through it. Mm -hmm. it may or may not stick, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it's kind the, of academic it, memory. It's like the, what same, you just it's the I, same for me. Um, okay. But, you know, now now because my SI is at the top, I might be a little bit better with rote memorization or more comfortable with it, relatively speaking. But but some things I still have to go through multiple iterations of it. It may not stick the first time, especially if it's, not tying into any previous knowledge if it's not in my fi in my fi box now now people's ops types i just have a weird ability to remember it like i'll see it once and i'll remember it but but maybe this is because it's so fi interesting and i don't know it just sticks uh, <laughs> um i think i think it's probably correct uh and maybe maybe it's two things maybe one you do have better rote memory than me because it's it's your senior savior Right, double activated SI too, right? Yeah, at the top, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be stronger than mine across the board probably. Uh, I might have some select areas where I excel, but across the board I would be saluting you, you know, <laughs> in the community as one of the tops. And uh, so that's one reason why. The other reason is like you're saying is like if it's really in your F FI box and you've been in the community for longer, you you combine those together and you'll be able to like reel off people's uh 512s, whereas I haven't really done that much. You know, I'm, I know a few peoples because I've dealt with them significantly, but otherwise it's like, what's your 512 again? 
you know, so I don't have that kind of memory. But there's a lot of be... things that, that kind of go, that kind of go in one ear and out the other. Like I'm just helping some customer in the library and they'll tell me their name. And then, and then like a couple of minutes later, Oh, what's your name again? And even though, even though my sense sensing is masculine and masculine sensory is supposed to be good at it. For me, it's very hit or miss, mm. but um, it could be an intentional thing, you know, I'm just like consume last and I'm like, and, 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 you know, and maybe it's also because it isn't always the personal connection, even though it should be sometimes it's more business transaction. Like, what do you need? Let me get it, get it to you. It, you know, it's almost like the name is less relevant, you know, cause it doesn't matter if you're, if you're Jeff or Fred, you know, why, why, why would that matter? Yeah. And I mean, and, and, and it could be a single observer thing. I, I, I'm <laughs> too, because of like the, you know, that's, it's that's the, true. The that's personal true. aspect of the people. Yeah. So I think that's one thing that uh, I would like to ask you a question, if I may, now that you kind of like led us into two things, actually. Uh, one is what are some of the things that, you know, we talked about academic memorization. But some other things about SI that you think people think, oh, you can do this, but you're like, eh, maybe not so much. Is there anything else that kind of lands kind of like, eh, nah, you I give think me credit a lot for that of people think SI leads are very routinized and regimented. And I'm not. Like, I don't even like planning that much. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, like the act of planning, okay, the process of planning, I don't like. I like it when things are already planned. But like, like planning like a big social gathering, for example, there's just so many logistics you got to take care of or planning for a big vacation. It gets exhausting and overwhelming. It's almost like I'd rather just have it all pre-planned and settled and I can just enjoy it. So that I think that's I think that's one thing. You know, because we don't always enjoy our saviors. You know, we feel responsible for it. I mean, yeah, right. I'm going to do, do some planning so that I don't, I don't have unexpected chaos. Um, and like, and like the things that are important in my life, you know, I mean, that I want to make sure I'll get done. I'll, there'll be some routines to that, but then there, I also kind of build in flexibility, like with my exercise routine it's sort of like okay i know that health experts say that you should do you should do like cardio exercise three to five times a week you know do like a 30 minute session but it doesn't matter so much what time of the day i do it as long as it gets done um you know or, or practicing my spanish you know i'll try to get in 15 to 30 minutes a day but again the time of the day when it gets done varies um once in a while, I may skip a day, and then I try to make up for it the next day. I might do extra. So, yeah, same. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds very familiar. It's like folks think you're very regiment, but one thing that also sticks out here is you know the planning part. That's like breathing oxygen for me. It's easy, and I love planning. So maybe it's because I'm lead TE double activated, right? My I don't know. Well, play. I think yeah. Well, TE, yeah, it could be TE. Because like TE is a, is a decider function. And so maybe you kind of prefer more of that decision-making and finalizing. And whereas SI at the top is inherently an observer function. And Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's observer. And then also your IJ, right? And I'm EJ. Yeah. So you want to control it and maybe want to execute it. Uh, I don't know. And whereas I'm very comfortable with leadership and kind of probably too much. So some people might say. Yeah. And uh, so that part's easy for me. And the SI kind of like is almost like an instrument for me that I okay. use to be able to do the TE. I call TE Bob the Builder, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're constructing a pathway from point A okay. to point B and you're doing something in the sensory or in the planning projects from that. And SI is your big instrument that allows you to kind of narrow it down, and combine those together. And that's how I kind of see it. So then that's another okay. distinction between you being at the top and me being in the second place with SI. So I think for me, it's kind of more reverse. It's kind of like the TE is serving the SI more. Mm -hmm. like, like, yeah. And I think another thing is you you shoot from the hip a lot more than, than I do. You know, like when we're, like when we're talking 
<laughs> you know, prior prior to even airing airing this, when we were, we were just talking to the two of us, you're like, let's make sure we have some any fun fun in there. And I'm kind of more like I want to see Quonset and I want to make sure we know what order we're doing things in and and like timing it and you know we don't go over the time limit and and you're kind of you're kind of more trusting like we'll just figure it out as we go and um and i mean i'm not the most rigid i mean i'm i mean some istjs are super super rigid about it but i think because I, I have play second and it's and it's a feminine double feminine play i can kind of go with the flow more easily with some than some istjs but they're still you know, it's still going a little bit against my comfort zone, I guess. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And yeah, you're right. And and that's another distinction between us. We both have, you know, SI savior, but there's so many nuances, which is the beauty of OPS, because you can see all those distinctions. And H.M. Myers-Briggs offers those distinctions as well. Socionics, I'm sure, too, but I'm not as familiar with them. But mm -hmm. like, I think, I feel, my brain feels like it has more NE in it than SI. Mm -hmm. And I've talked that with folks in the tribe and I was yeah. like, Hey, am I, should I be play first T E N E? Right. And they're like, no, mm -hmm. no, because, and, and they convinced me because it's like, I have an elementary school principal in my head and that, that principal is masculine S I. And like, I'm skibbing all over the place, with my play and consume and my N E because yeah. it's, it's loaded. My brain feels like it's 70% N E actually, but that masculine S I elementary principles, like, Boom. Remember, okay. buddy, you're yeah. responsible. You're obligated to organize this stuff to get somewhere. And that's and so, what, yeah. yeah. And that's what's the beauty of OPS is that, you know, it captures the nuances like like with the animal stacking because you can be double activated on a demon function and to the point where you might identify more with that than what your savior is, even though you're responsible for your savior at the end of the day. Yeah, because so like I'm 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 in the middle, I'm skib in the middle, right? Play and consume. And mm -hmm. uh I've got a lot of highly developed, diverse masculine FI hobbies. And so I can like skib around quite a bit and feel real comfortable with it. But again, it it all boils down to there's some some uh, clever and, and more intelligent and more educated on OPS people in the tribe to me, and they're like, No, I see what you're saying, but at the end of the day, you might go around, but you're going to neck it down. And and actually, I think they did a class uh, in the OPS class on James Cameron talking about that, how he kind of dances around. Yeah. Just kind of like chapter changing, channel changing, mm -hmm. whatever. But then it's always centralized back to a point. And that yeah. is really something I identify with. Mm -hmm. So what else about the NESI axis kind of is something that you would offer right up. yes so well one thing is is that like i'll start with like a specific sensory point and there's multiple possibilities that branch from it and it's really hard to narrow down to any one possibility and mm -hmm. you know i think i think having the, the any feminine kind of makes that makes that worse and it's it can be good or bad you know it can keep you flexible and you know open-minded about how things could go or, but then but then it can also not be very very confident like when you're typing somebody for the OPS class and you um you make some sensory obser observation about them and then my and then my any can branch branch it out into multiple coins that it could be but I but I can't settle on any any one of them yeah yeah no I'm not very confident there it's a demon it's at the bottom um, and it seems like the, the people with the other axis, the, the NISC, like, like they have a whole bunch of sensory points and they can just gather it down to one, one conclusion and they're, they're confident of it. And I both admire it, but then sometimes I will disrespect it because like, like when I think that they're making a conclusion too prematurely, you know, especially mm -hmm. like if. You know, if NI is their savior and, and and if it's masculine, it's just like, you know, you don't really have much to go with here. And <laughs> are you so sure? <laughs> yeah. So, again, another distinction, you know, your NE is at the bottom. It's feminine also. It's less than mine. Mine wants to, like, really get in there and just 
all right, what about this? What about that? And so I kind of make a joke. I have to have kind of like, I guess it's proof of SI as well, because, you know, I have names and acronyms for everything, right? That's kind of an SI thing, I believe. So I call my, uh, my uh, feminine NE is like, it's like skeet shooting ideas. It's like, imagine a skeet shooter. It's like, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Here's a possibility. Here's a possibility. But then that, that elementary school principal, again, I call it bazooka, the masculine SI, it's sitting there saying, bullshit. <laughs> Is shooting that crap out of the sky left and right. And then yeah. what's left standing now? Let's see what patterns are legit and the century can back. And that double observer uh, function is what I'm learning is kind of like something I really leverage off of a lot. And it keeps me, one, open-ended to see possibilities. But boy, uh, I won't I won't go off into the ether for long with that before masculine SI comes in and says, bullshit, <laughs> excuse my French. And yeah. next it down pretty significantly yeah. for me. So I guess that's another way where, you know, double observer versus single observer with SI and SI in the middle and almost 50-50 for me versus at any, I'm sorry, at the bottom for you uh, might be a, another distinction, even though we got lots of similarities. Yeah, no, exactly. So what other kind of... Uh, SI antidotes, like maybe from your work or your career or your education or something kind of comes to mind is, you know, how would well, you describe that to somebody, again, who they didn't know Myers-Briggs or cognitive functions or OPS? Okay, well, I think, well, with OPS, um, you know, the way I would explain SI is a, you know, OPS, at the heart of OPS, you have human needs. And if you're an IJ type, your dominant human need is certainty. So you're, you're striving for that, that greater certainty, that sense of security, wanting to narrow it down. And then sensory, you know, deals with like the concrete and the tangible, the factual proof. So, so SI is basically taking the human need of OI and combining it with sensory. So like in my everyday life, it's kind of like a filing cabinet. It, it's like, mm. okay, like it could, it could be like, like papers that you're filing and you got to sort them, got to sort them by function and, and knowing you know, where to put it. And, um, so in your work, you're a librarian, right? So that's yeah. been super handy. Well, yeah, and and I mean, like like the way the the books are organized by by Dewey Decimal Number. If it's a nonfiction book or author's last name, it's it's a fiction book. It, it's just you know, it's a reliable system. It's an unchanging system. You can and you know, and and then you have and it's clear. So you have some new new sensory point come in, but you can you know tie it back to what you know already. Yeah, so the Dewey Decimal System, you know, I'm, I'm in my 50s, so I'm old enough. I remember going to the little public library two blocks from my house and pulling the little card file things out and flipping through all the little vanilla things and, and learning about that. These days with the modern libraries, I, I, you know, not a lot of folks probably have that. I know my, my, my library here in my little town got uh, redone like three years ago. And they may have those cards there, but I, I, I'm not aware if they do. So you still have those at your library? Not, not the, not the cards. No. Okay. But there is a library like in downtown Minneapolis, and they have like a lot of older. They're huge libraries. So they got some old special collections because they got the room for them, and they still have old card catalogs for some of the special collections. Hmm. So that's like really like PhD level SI to me. It's like, it's organized information and data and filing and in the century and a catalog all at once, right? Is that how it lands for you? Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, I guess I would say some of the other things that creep up about my, you know, the SI and the anecdotes. Like, I think SI is can be particular like on on terminology and accuracy like i i will have a customer that comes and they say well i want to make a photocopy of this 
but really they don't want to photocopy it. They want to print it out. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm like that, that's two different things. And, and yes, in, 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 yes, like the concept of, I understand that the concept of making a copy, but, but it's different because a photocopy, you, you just, you know, put it directly on the copy machine, but if you're printing it out, you got to go to a computer and locate the file and then, you know, hit, then hit print. And I'm, you know, and the process is different. And, and then, and then sometimes my S, you know, I'll get confused because like the customer knows what they mean, but they're not saying the right word, but that, so I have to infer sometimes what they really, what they really want. And, you know, they didn't use the right term. So <laughs> it can, it can get me confused sometimes, but I, I think I've gotten better with that through experience, knowing what people really want. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you find that maybe you don't have as much problem with it because you're a double server, but. Uh, well, I just know people make fun of me for my terminologies and my language. <laughs> you know, I am very particular with word choice and uh, I don't know. I've always been a word nerd. There's a whole bunch of dictionaries behind me. And, um, so I don't know, um, uh, it's it, what your question really was there, but my reaction is, is that, you know, word choice and descriptions and things of that nature. I tend to, I think I'm pretty good with that, generally speaking. People tell me I'm anyway, but sometimes I feel like I'm not because I will ramble and I'm like, uh, I probably just lost them. I need to get back on track. So that's one of my struggles with SIs because I kind of feel like my mind is a lot more scattered than what people are perceiving. And so I'm second guessing myself, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, am I on the track they want me to be on or not? But then after it's done, they usually tell me I am. Okay. So do you have that happening to you or you do, do find you're pretty much straight driving down the lane and staying on point? I'm mostly straight driving down the lane. And when I'm on a tangent, I will know that I'm on a tangent and, and like, I'll try to bring it, bring it back. It's more like, when I'm with other people and I'm seeing other people doing the channel changing and I'm, and I'm like trying to narrow, narrow them down. It, it's sort of like I'm helping a customer in the library mm. and like, let's say they want to request a book. Okay. And, and I'm helping them request a book, but while we're in that process, they're going on about something else. Oh, they're going on about some program that the library is offering. And I'm like, let's just finish requesting your book first, and then we'll talk about the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does that frustrates you a lot. Yes, yeah. You know, you, you know, and I try to be flexible, and you know, but but it's like I, I just worry that you know, like I might forget. You, you know, if there's too much thrown in my way, and not everything is going to get get done like it should. Um, so I, I guess one thing that's landing for me right now, I, I don't know if this is valid, you, you tell me, but it's like I worked with tons of ISTJs in my former career. Probably a lot of them just like you, uh, double activated, lead SI, world-class memory, world-class organization, filing system. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm world-class. I wouldn't well, know that. to far. me you are. <laughs> I mean, okay. look at all the stuff you do in OPS with all the documents you update. It's like, you know what, if I had to, I could do that, but boy, it'd be painful. It, it seems like it's, I'm not saying it doesn't have its work and its hardship to it, but it seems like it's pretty fluidly accessible to you. That would be like really difficult for me. I could do it, but would not be comfortable. Okay. So anyway, it's, it's again, the spectrum thing, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, we, we kind of rate ourselves and we shouldn't, but human experience kind of like we compare notes with each other and try to assess where we're at and how we can get better. So when you see somebody doing something great, you're like, Oh boy, I wish I could do that. So yeah. what, what is, I think, do you think you don't do that? People think you could do good that you'd like to do. That I like, I don't know. I mean, Because, I mean, I can think of some SI things that other people or other lead SIs might do that I don't do, but then it's like, I don't feel a need to do them. And, and one was like, like rigorously planning out every 
second or hour of your day. Mm-hmm. And, and cause for me, it's kind of more like, like, you know, yes, there's things that are locked in because of like obligations, you know, and appointments, you know, those are locked in, but then like so much of this other stuff is, is flexible. And it's just, it's kind of like, well, you know how Dave and Shannon talk about the, the three wheelbarrows. It's sort of like you have three important tasks that you want to get done for the day. And it just makes sure you have, you, you're able to get those three wheelbarrows done. But it doesn't matter when you when when you do them. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I because I know some some are more ISTJs are more regiment regimentally scheduled. Like like they have lunch at, at exactly the same time every day. They 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 plan out their meals like like a week ahead. They plan out what clothes they're gonna wear and mm-hmm. and I and you know they always exercise at the same time. And um, but I don't really see a need to do that. Because I, because it's like my life is organized as it is, and 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 I know when when it, when it's chaotic. I know when something is, something is off. So I, I guess I don't see the point in going to that. It's degree. almost like uh, you know you're driving the highway, and like they have those corrugated bumps on the side of the road for if you fall asleep and, do, 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 and bring you back on. It's almost yeah. like you're that way. You know, you're like giving yourself some leeway, and yeah. you've got a guardrail that's going to give you yep. a, and yep. you're going to bump back in. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I and might end up in the ditch, and I'll, I'll I got, end up okay, but I'll, I'll probably. I got go this off new car. Well, it's it's not technically a new car; it's a new used car, but it's but it's pretty new. It's 2020, and and one thing that that that's on this car that 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 the, my, the other one didn't have is there's actually it, it actually has a thing that lights up that warns you when you might not be alert enough. Like it, it knows like maybe when you're swerving just a little bit too much, mm. and it suggests you may want to take a break and rest. <laughs> A little scary. I don't know, I if, know. I, I don't know if I like that but too I, much. But Functionally I, good. I guess. <laughs> but but that's sort of the way my, I guess my brain kind of naturally works. Like, um, and and I think having sleep third too kind of kind of helps because you can kind of sense okay, okay, I need I need to take I need to take a rest where so I don't want to be or too much off course. Whereas I think if you're sleep last, it, it's more of a crash. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to say I never get tired driving, but, you know, I could pretty much muscle through anything. I guess that, that sleep lasts uh, at the bottom there. It just kind of like, if there's something I have to do, I'll do it, you know, and I'll muscle through it. Now, I have had my moments when I've driven on road trips and it's 2, 3 in the morning and I, I got, you know, God and the universe are looking out for me because there's no way I shouldn't have flipped my vehicle or something, but. Generally speaking, it that that kind of comes uh, good for me. So, what did you think about? You know, I watched that that video we talked talked about where where Dave said that people with SI they don't you know they have a hard time accepting they do because the standards that we hold ourselves to are so high. And that that was like along with Jamie making that comment to me and some other folks saying, yeah, you do this. Yeah, you do this. You make a list, you make summaries, you keep track of things. That really resonated with me a lot too, because that's one reason why I thought there's no way I have SI because, you know, I think my standards and my expectations, I'm always feeling like I'm disorderly, but yet when push comes to shove, my hands are on the wheel and I drive it back and put it in the, in the box it's supposed to be in. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, for me, I, I kind of knew that I was good at it, you know, even when I thought I was an intuitive type, <laughs> you know, so, so, so it was kind of the opposite for me. And it was like, but then the thing is, I didn't really want to be a sensing type, you know, because <laughs> and, and because of the bad stereotypes that are, I think, that are in the MBTI community and they were... I think they were misrepresenting what what SI really was because it was like intuitive types trying to describe SI, you know, rather than getting a real SI perspective. Um, so, so I didn't agree with some of those stereotypes. And so a lot of them come from this. I, I got MBTI certified September twenty. Okay. Oh, you're showing the century. With, <laughs> yeah, I've got the century. It's loaded with a lot of things like that, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, 
it took me a long time to wrap my hands around the idea that OPS's SI was just distinct and different. Yes, it, it really is. And I think in the OPS community compared to a lot of the, the MBTI communities, there's it's more, um, you know, there's less of a hierarchy among types. It, it's sort of like in these typology communities, if you're in an intuition dominant, especially like if you're an INFJ or INTJ, you're like at the top of the hierarchy. And if you're a sensing dominant, you're at the bottom. And and the OPS community isn't isn't like that. We're more or less on an equal level. We've we've all got our own strengths. We've all got our own struggles. And 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 I mean, I've had plenty of people that, that have said like they 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 wish they had my they wish they had my SI. And and you know, it's good to have that validation, honestly. Um and so you yeah. knew it all along and you were comfortable I think, with it. I think on a deep down level, I, I knew it all along and I was kind of in denial. And and I and I and I, you know, for a while I used to just feel insecure about about the NE. It, it, it's 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 like I wanted to be this like really original, out of the box, out of the box thinker, and I didn't want to be boring and you know, I wanted to be flexible and I kind of wanted to be all this, all this, this any stuff. And I really wanted to be good at it. And it's something I really desired for myself. But then I think I always kind of felt like I had to prove myself because I could see these any dominant people doing all these things. And it's like, I, I can't do that, you know, and um, I can't solve these riddles like they can. And And I remember I would, I would try to get these puzzle books and brain teasers and try to solve them. I wanted to prove to myself I could do it. And sometimes I could do them and sometimes I couldn't, but it was always more hit or miss or coming up with some really original idea. And I'm, I'd be proud when it came up with something sort of original, but then it was nothing like the any dominance could do. And, and now it, it's like, you know, I, I've made more peace with what, with what my gifts are. I'm not trying to be fixed mindset about it. I'm not trying to say, well, I'm not, you know, because I know that some situations you do need to use any, any and stuff, but, but I think I'm kind of okay being, being an SI, being an SI lead. And awesome. I'm also okay with accepting that the world isn't going to run on my saviors all the time either. Yeah, boy, that's a big point too. Because we we really we really kind of like psychologically project our standards and our capabilities on the other people, and they do the same thing. So I think that's one thing. The vast majority of people in OPS they they give you grace because they're seeing their strengths and weaknesses, and knowing you are, and it opens up the puzzle. And there's so much more to inspect in about yourself and others. And, and give grace to other people when you see them leaning into their demons and they screw up because they're going to screw up. Right. That's, that's just, mm -hmm. that's just the lecture one oh one on this stuff, you know? Okay. Well, they're, they're leaning into something. They're not savvy, not sophisticated at, they're not used to using it. So they're going to screw up a little bit, maybe a lot, mm -hmm. mm, but at least that's part of the process of reaching that alpha state and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. So yeah. do you feel like you're uh you're, you're making good progress on leaning in into your demons and, and kind of balancing it out and all that good stuff? Well, I'm, I'm certainly trying to, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be okay with, with making more, making more guesses and not having to have it all right the first time. Mm. But, you know, it's, it's a challenge. I, I won't lie. Um, you know, if you got some good pointers, let me know. I mean, maybe just having this channel is good because we can we can kind of bounce any, and you can encourage me to shoot from the hip a little more. And um, yeah, yeah, I almost do that too well. And so I'm coming from the other side of the equation. Yeah. I feel so much more intuitive than sensory in my yeah. brain in my life. You know, I have to respect the fact that I think that that it's what you're major responsibility and obligations are so that SI kind of like inches over the top and and it it's it's the one that's making the calls at the end of the day right but yeah, yeah. shooting for the hips like brainstorming ideas ideation mm -hmm. out in woo-woo land I, I love that stuff you know so 
it's it's really interesting to see how we both have masculine SI and we both have our share of competencies, but then you know it really it really opens it up to see the distinctions as well, which is really cool to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we we are planning to be more any crazy in in future interviews. <laughs> we're, we're planning yeah, to be more yeah, we, crazy, and I realize how. <laughs> We we're guessing. gonna we're gonna do for anybody listening we're gonna we're gonna probably do a series the si experience with lauren brian uh probably two or three maybe more so uh we probably should wrap this up this is probably good to get us going and since we're going to do another one and anybody that's listening that wants to shoot us a dm and tell us a topic or have a curiosity you know we'll we'll be more than happy to look at those and talk them and then work them into the next time we do this does that sound good with yeah, yep. that sounds good. That sounds good with me. Thanks for, for being on my show here. And if you want to see more videos like this, I, I got to give you my blaster blurb here. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Okay. You got one. You got that down. That's kind of like a little SI, to, SI speech, huh? Yeah. Of course, everybody on YouTube has to do that. So, uh, you know, everybody does everything, right? I guess. Okay. Right, thanks, thanks for having All me, right. Laura.